Uh, hello, this is uh, Michael Cunningham here from uh, World Affairs Council of Austin uh, and also from Geography of Genocide. And we're here interviewing and talking about the Belarusian uh, uh, Holocaust. And today I'd like to start out the questions. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Please tell us a little bit about yourselves and what do you do? Do, do, I do start. Um, Pavel, we'll start from you. Yeah, uh, we'll start out first and then we'll go. Mind. I'm Pavel Shudlovsky. I'm uh, Chief of Mission with the Embassy of Belarus in the uh, in the United States. I've been here for one year and I represent Belarus in the United States of America. So I'm, I'm responsible for the diplomatic business between our two countries and, uh, 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 you know, connections with, with, with people, with the officials of, of the U.S. And uh, one of the activities that I'm engaged with, specifically with, with Mike Cunningham, is uh, the uh, uh, investigation and the, the study of the genocide of the Belarusian people in the Second World War and afterwards. Thank you. And could you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Um, uh, my name is Alexander Nerubov. Uh, I am the uh, director of the Jewish Museum in Minsk. And I'm a professional guide uh, as well. Uh, I'm a I research uh, the uh, history and culture of Belarusian Jews. Very good. Thank you so much. And now for our, our audience here, tell us a little bit about your country and its history. And we'll start with Alexander first. Alexander, can you tell us a little bit about your, con our con your country and, our, and your history, and especially focus in on, on the Russia, on the how many Jewish people there were in, in 41 when the the German Nazis invaded? You see, uh, our country, uh, Belarus, uh, it's an uh, uh, ancient, ancient country, ancient land with a very rich history. Uh, but as you know, the independent state of Belarus was uh, found only a little bit more than 30 years ago. So you can say that we are a young country with ancient and rich history. Um, uh, Jews live on Belarusian land already for more than 600 years, uh, but uh, some historians have an idea that uh, Belarus came to Belarusian land already in the 12th century. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, in our museum, we try to tell people a lot about the uh, history and culture of Belarusian Jews. It's, it's six, 600 years, it's it's a lot, uh, but I must say that uh, the history of Holocaust, this is, uh, in, you know, a, a, a big part of, uh, of what, what, what we tell. It was only three years on Belarusian land from 19, 41 till 1944, but uh, it take a lot of it takes a lot of attention and uh, a lot of research. It's uh, really Im impo important part of uh, the history of Belarusian Jews. Thank you very much, Alexander. Uh, Pavel, could you tell us a little bit about from background about maybe how many people were impacted by the. Uh, uh, the uh, Nazi invasion and, and during those three-year period of time? Yeah, during the three years of war, uh, over three million people uh, have, have been, uh, have lost their lives. So they, they've been killed, they've been tortured, they, uh, they, they died in concentration camps, both in, in Belarus and in, in, in Poland and Germany and other places. And uh, uh, that actually includes the collaborators who fought on the side of, uh, of, the, of the Nazis, so they were Belarusians as well, but not not, not such a significant number. But, but anyway, but uh, according to uh, according to the historians, over three million people were killed, and uh, the population of Belarus before the war was over nine million people. So every third person has been killed in the war, and uh, uh, 
um, we, we suffered in terms of the per capita population, we suffered more than any other country which, uh, which uh, uh, fought in, uh, in that war. And so what, is in... what is important is that uh, just uh, recently we have, uh, we have uh, given uh, it a new life. We wanted our people to learn more about genocide, about uh, how, uh, how Belarus suffered and what was done to the people of Belarus. And I have, I have uh, some recent update, or maybe I will share it with you later if we have time about the results of the investigation of the genocide. Uh, but uh, just it was revealed that there were uh, quite uh, an, uh, uh, quite a number of people and uh, and uh, settlements and uh, uh, graves uh, that that actually happened in the war and that were not discovered uh, 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 previously. So this is an important factor in our history, and we want to learn it in order to avoid uh, such uh, horrific. Uh, uh, horrific developments in our country. So it's aimed uh, for, for the future, for the protection of our country, and its people, its uh, independence. So, Pablo, if I, if I understand, what, uh, if I heard you correctly, you said that there's approximately 9 million population in Belarus at the time of the invasion, and in three years, 33% of the people uh, were murdered. Is that correct? Yeah. Wow. That, that, that's uh, something I, I don't think the average uh, person here in the United States realizes or maybe around the world. So I, I think like it's very important. That kind of comes up to our next my next question here. Um, I go to number four. Why is it important to hunt down these murderers today and try to bring people and events to, that took place so long ago? Why is it so important? Alexander, could you tell us, uh, give you your insight on that, why you think it's so important? Yeah, um, you see, it's uh, uh, it's important to find in the names of the criminals, yeah, of uh, the murderers. But uh, you know, it, as well, it's very important to find out uh, the names of uh, the victims. And uh, uh, what I think uh, that uh, uh, this this is one among the main. Uh, uh, main topics of uh, the research to find the names of uh, pe people who were killed as well. Okay, Paul, uh, I I can I can say that uh, you know uh, a couple of years ago our country was in a difficult uh, situation and uh, uh, there were some uh, unfortunate events happening and uh, uh, it was. Uh, Extremely extremists and neo Nazis who were in the front rows, in the front ranks of those people who protested uh, against the government of the country. So, uh, uh, not and it happens not only in Belarus, but in many other countries, neo Nazis are raising their ugly heads and that uh, try to rewrite the history, try to misrepresent the historic facts, and it leads to chaos, it leads to anarchy, and we want uh, we want to avoid that. That is why uh, 80 years after what happened, we started uh, this investigation uh, into the genocide of the Belarusian people. We don't want uh, hatred uh, to be agitated in our country. And uh, we want to educate our youth to uh, uh, del deliver uh, this message, this uh, uh, patriotic ideological message uh, in, in the schools, in the universities. And uh, we want to prevent penetration of neo-Nazi ideology of Belarus. And uh, we want uh, to tell people the truth, to tell it uh, uh, directly, straightforwardly. Uh, and we want it buttressed by real facts, real investigations, real testimonies of people who survived uh, these uh, tragic events, these atrocities. And it's uh, uh, it's been very successful, it's been uh, very widespread so far, and uh, many people are getting involved. For example, every excavation site which we which we do, we invite uh, we invite school children from local schools to go there and see with their own eyes what actually happened there and look at the bones and look at, the, at their ancestors who've been killed and buried in, in those mass graves. So this is very educational. This is 
uh, you know, although maybe it's very graphic and emotional, but it's a good, uh, a, a good uh, lesson uh, so that these things, uh, uh, these historical things should never be repeated. Oh, yeah, I, I think I, I totally agree with you. It, it's a lot better than just reading it out of a history book is to actually get to see it live. And I know that uh, I was looking at a Netflix uh, documentary, uh, Eisengruppen, and they were talking about going through Belarus and, and um, blowing up a lot of these mass graves that they did. So they wouldn't they they were worried that they would uh, do this. So uh, they were trying Germans were trying to destroy as they were retreating. They were trying to destroy these uh, and evidently very effectively. So you couldn't ever really catch and see. And I can understand what Alexander said is that once you disturb corpses and once you disturb the people and identification it becomes virtually impossible uh at least at that time until we get dna or, and stuff uh who they are so th this becomes a a very very important thing what can we do as uh teachers and students here in the united states to help you along on this uh on this really important mission alexander what what can we do to help out your museum and and what you're doing no, actually, uh, it's very important to find out if uh, any student uh, in the United States or people in the United States can share their family stories. So maybe somebody uh, so somebody can tell about uh, how their uh, grandparents, great grandparents survived uh, du during the uh, Holocaust times. As well, for sure, we need volunteers uh, to help us with uh, collecting information and uh, work with information. And uh, what I have to mention, your questions. Your questions are very important for, for us because it helps us to uh, look uh, on the problem from another side, from the maybe from the other side of the ocean, but uh, it, it uh, opens uh, you know, new perspectives for us because we we are used for our questions, but uh, some questions you sent me, uh, it was absolutely something absolutely new. So your questions are very important for us. Okay, Pablo, we, as, as living here in the United States as, as long as you had and seen about school and stuff like that, and you're talking about, you know, I wish we could actually take people to see some of these uh, graves that the Nazis blew up because, uh, you know, you can really see now did they kill them once. They basically try to kill them twice and then they try to bury the truth. So, you know, this is uh, this is something that school children should be. It's, it's a universal truth. It should it should be uh, something that can be studied in all places. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh uh, this should be investigated, this should be studied, uh, uh, truth has to be given to the people and the people have the right to know what has happened and I think uh, we are willing to, to, to uh, have uh, foreign experts uh, come to Belarus and uh, see it with their own eyes. We uh, would love you to come if you have a chance uh, at some point to come and visit Belarus. Uh, I have yet to receive a, a response from Prosecutor General's office if, if they will be uh, prepared to invite you for the uh, uh, international conference that they will have uh, in conjunction with the 20 with the 75th anniversary of the of the documents uh, condemning uh, genocide uh, genocide convention and if it happens uh, you, you will definitely have an opportunity to to visit uh, those places and memor memorials that we have uh, created. And uh, if uh, there are people in, in the US willing to go uh, or send uh, uh, school children, we will mostly welcome those people. And uh, we have uh, several groups uh, from, for example, from uh, Atlanta area in, in Georgia that uh, uh, have interest and send young people uh, to, uh, uh, to help Belarusian kids in summer camps and uh, also uh, uh, get familiar with the history of Belarus and they share our views on uh, uh, on the uh, condem condemnation of the atrocities that the Nazis uh, committed in the Second World War. Okay, 
Now, I have a question here. It's kind of interesting that some of my students want me to ask you. Why is it? Uh, why is it in? Why is inhuman? Okay, excuse me. Why is inhumanity to one group inhumanity to all groups? You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, they were Jewish people. You know, I'm not Jewish, or they don't know their heritage. Uh, I, I think that actually, when you start studying your genealogy, we all are going to be related to Jewish people at some point. I know quite a few of my relatives are are, are Jewish. When you go back, you know, several generations. So uh, why why should we be concerned if if we're not uh, practicing Jewish people right now, Alexander? You might could address that first. So uh, I want to say that uh, to to answer you by the words of. Rabbi uh, Jonathan um, Jonathan Sachs, uh, he was the main rabbi in the uh, Great Britain. He said that the hate that starts with Jews never ends there. And you can say this about any other uh, na national group. The hate that starts from uh, one part of your, uh, of your country, of your uh, people, yeah, it never ends. Uh, there, so this is it's very important to uh, to to stop the hate in the in the very beginning, and it, it do doesn't matter uh, who from from whom the um, you, you know it, it started. Okay, uh, do you have anything comment on that, Papa? Yes, uh, yes, uh, I. Uh... I can say that uh, now many people uh, uh, in in the uh, in in the including in the Western countries are trying to, uh, if not directly support, but trying to you know side with or get along with the glorification of the Nazis and uh, uh, with uh, uh, disseminating Nazi uh, propaganda, Nazi ideology, especially on young people. Uh, in uh, in the countries, let's say Eastern Europe, I won't name specific countries, and it results in the uh, in the falsification of the history, in hiding historic facts, in rewriting history, in desecrating uh, World War II memorials, uh, in bringing down monuments, and it happens unfortunately in the four countries with which Belarus neighbors, and uh, uh, at the same time we in Belarus. Uh, vice versa, we try to keep every grave, every brotherhood grave, uh, every monument memorial, and we bring new, build new memorials. And it's, uh, at every grave site that we discover, we, we want to erect at least a memorial plaque commemorating and giving the facts of what happened there in the war. So Nazi ideology mm. is very easy to consume, to spread, and to, uh, to infect uh, the minds of young people who will uh, who will go after not only Jews but who will go after their own compatriots in their hatred. So this has to be stopped, and it's uh, unfortunately that it happens. Uh, you know, uh, in in some of the countries which uh, which are you know neighboring countries of Belarus. Yeah, and, and I actually think it's happening maybe in other parts of the world as well. Uh, a lot of times people forget about how horrendous the uh, Nazi uh, regime was and and how much damage they actually did. And they and by glorifying it, by not telling all the truth about it, uh, people just forget about how bad it is. It's, it's a very good point. OK, um, uh, what sense of pride do you have when you know that your country is one of the very last people to seek uh, genocide trials? Uh, what, what kind of sense does that have? Or, or does it make you feel proud to be Belarusian that you're taking up a mantle that other people have cast aside? Alexander, could, could you address that now, Pablo? Uh, you, you see, it's always very important when people want to know the truth, to know the truth and to tell uh, truth to, uh, to the citizens of the country, to uh, to children, yeah, I, I think that it's very important. Pablo, you have anything? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it is very important to uh, know 
the truth uh, about to, to know the historical truth and to uncover uh, facts of our history and shed light on our history, even on on the facts and events which run, which we are not specifically particularly proud about. And uh, uh, in this, we are very similar to the Americans because the Americans never hide historic truths, and uh, they never hide, for example, slavery. Uh, they never hide, uh, you know, U.S. Uh, U.S. Uh, officials and presidents being slave owners. Uh, that happened, and uh, that was part of history. And uh, you know, we cannot uh, conceal these things. We have to think, reevaluate these things, and uh, you know. Uh, take lessons and make sure it doesn't uh, get uh, repeated in the future. Uh, if we remember uh, about our history, we uh, will not we will not uh, commit the same mistakes, and uh, we will have the future because we will build our attitude toward the world, toward uh, relationships with other countries, toward uh, different facts and uh, developments in the country on the basis of what happened before and you know sometimes take lessons sometimes avoid uh, uh, avoid the things that uh, happened in our country so uh, it makes me it makes me very proud and uh, it makes me believe that our country will remain independent and will uh, go through this uh, uh, difficult uh, historical period and uh, you know, keep uh, its its national pride, its uh, its independence, uh, and uh, you know, build and create and uh, develop friendly relations and trade with other countries of the world instead instead of creating, uh, you know, uh, sort of propagating hatred or creating uh, walls and and restrictions in in trade and uh, 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 restrictions in in travel of the people. So we are. Uh, absolutely against it we are open and friendly toward other countries so okay. yeah I'm, I'm very proud about it and i i'm happy to to uh, to learn about the uh, the uh, progress of the investigation into the crimes of, of genocide and i am happy uh, uh, to uh, uh, to to see that it helps to unite our country and our people uh, for the purpose of the good of uh, developing our independence and uh, and positive uh, uh, creation in the future. Also, an unintended consequence could be is that you could develop that relationship with other countries that you currently don't enjoy that relationship with, because I think every right-minded person should agree with you that this is a very noble goal, don't you believe? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we have a number of... Uh, uh, a number of countries and peoples who side with us and who uh, choose to to trade and communicate and uh, become friends with us. Uh, uh, just uh, just recently, our foreign minister has visited the United Nations General Assembly. He, he had over 40 meetings. He had a number of public statements, uh, including the statement and at the UN General Assembly plenary and to deliver the views of Belarus on on the current world order on on the current. Uh, uh, problems uh, existing in the, in the world and the ways uh, that we see to, to resolve them. So that, that's, uh, that's important. And uh, uh, in our today's uh, changing world, uh, uh, you cannot isolate one country, you cannot uh, kill one country with sanctions and restrictions because there are other parts of the world and the world is versatile and uh, you can, de can develop part partnership and friendship with so many members of the world community. Okay. Uh, next question: Should we have a statute of limitations on murder or genocide? Uh, and it, you know, it seems it, like it, you know, it seems like arbitrarily some countries are doing it just by not prosecuting people. I, yeah, I think that, I think that, that some of these crimes has no, have no statute of limitations and uh, they are punishable uh, whenever it happens. What uh, important thing that we do in our country is that we uh, persecute Nazi criminals who are already dead. I don't think other countries do that because these crimes have to be uncovered. They, these crimes have to be uh, proven in the court of law and they have to be persecuted even though they are dead, even though they are absent uh, from uh, Belarus and other countries. 
who want to hide them and who want to hover them, uh, don't, don't want to extradite them. See the recent example in Canada. Uh, Ukraine now wants this guy to be extradited, and this is the right thing to do. Even after eight, 80 years after he committed those crimes in, in, uh, in the Nazi formation in, in uh, uh, Western Ukraine, even after that, he is punishable and uh, he is extraditable, and hopefully it will, go, it will continue. And uh, uh, these things have, can, can never be forgotten. Okay, uh, I'll skip to a couple of questions here and ask you a question. Tell us a little bit about your museum, Alexandria, and the good work you're doing there. I'm not sure that all the people here in the States understand that. So if you could tell us a little bit more about your museum in Minsk. Did you, you get that, Alexander? Okay, I asked the question is, tell us a little bit about your museum and the good work you are doing there. What, what should we know about your museum? What would you like us to know? I think uh, he went, um, go ahead, Alexander. Okay, uh, just a few words about our museum activity. Uh, you know that the, the museum was founded uh, more than 20 years ago. And actually, I must say that uh, uh, there, there are uh, different kinds of Jewish museum in the world. I know that in the United States, there are several museums of Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our museum is, uh, uh, is the museum of Jewish uh, uh, of uh, culture and history of Belarusian Jews. So we tell much about the history, long history uh, of uh, Jewish people on the Russian land. And as well, we pay much attention to um, to Holocaust. Uh, and uh, I must say that uh, when the museum was found uh, 20 years ago, many survivors, people who survived from ghetto, people who uh, took part in uh, 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 in partisan movement, in underground movement. They were still alive, and uh, the employees of our museum they uh, had enough time to collect information to meet these people. That's why in our museum we have a huge archive uh, where you can find information about ghettos, about uh, underground movement, uh, Jewish partisans, uh, on ma many, many uh, different topics. As well, uh, we collected information about uh, writers, people among the nations, people who saved Jews during the, uh, uh, the German Nazi occupation of uh, Belarus. You know, so, and uh, I think that we uh, do, we did our best and we uh, try to learn uh, Holocaust uh, uh, and uh, teach Holocaust and uh, educate people uh, as well. Today, we try to tell people about uh, who are Jews because, you know, sometimes um, uh, school children come to our museum and the teachers say, Please tell us about Holocaust, and uh, we start from the question for the group: uh, Do you children have any uh, Jewish uh, classmates, neighbors, uh, friends? And very often, you can imagine a class of 20, 25 children, and they say, "We we don't know a single Jew." And uh, very often, we try to start from telling. Uh, children uh, about uh, Jewish culture, about uh, Jewish history. And after that, as uh, uh, we see it, uh, uh, speaking about Holocaust for them uh, becomes more meaningful. Okay, Pablo, do you have anything, comment on that? Or 
Uh, let's go ahead with the next question. And we're going to have some announcements here directly. So I, I may have to go mute for a moment. Uh, overall, when you when you take a look at at uh, what's happening here and and what's happening with the the trials, uh, could you give us a sense of uh, witness statements and how important witness statements are? And we'll start with uh, Nicholas first. And uh, why why should they worry about Nick uh, witness statements? I mean, we'll start with Alexander first, please. Thank you. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about how important witness statements are. And, and you said you had quite a few at the very beginning. And as we're getting older, I mean, as people are getting older, the witness statements are going to be more and more important when it comes to trials. Could you tell us a little bit about how your museum and other places have collected witness statements? Or I would Sure. That's you see, T today, uh, eyewitness statements are very important because, as you can see, that there are many people in the world, not only simple people, but historians as, as well, who say that there was no Holocaust. It's uh, absolutely ridiculous that why uh, we collect uh, witnesses of the people who were the prisoners of Minsk Ghetto, other ghettos who participated in. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so far in underground, and I, uh, I, I took some books, <laughs> yes, statements uh, of uh, the people who uh, saw everything on their own eyes, and uh, this book, written by Gears Smaller, uh, yeah, about uh, means Geta, it was printed in nineteen forty-seven. Uh, he was uh, one among the main figures in the uh, underground movement in Minsk, Geta. Uh, and uh, uh, even today, in 2023, we have some survivors still alive. It's hard to believe uh, people of at the age of 88, 90 years old, and uh, they still tell us uh, yeah, about uh, tell us what happened in Minsk Ghetto. Uh, but mo the majority of uh, witnesses today we we can we can read. There are many 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 books in our the library in the museum which were written by uh, the people who saw all these uh, you know crimes on their own eyes. Mike, may I add a little here? Yeah, go ahead. And could, before you do, could I ask uh, Alexander, could you find a short little witness statement while he's speaking and maybe could read it to us so that people could get a sense of what some of those books are like? Okay. And go ahead, Pablo. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is very important to have... Uh, uh, you, you see, uh, th there is a... There is a book in even in English, David Guy, huh? Innocence in Hell. Yeah, this this is a, a, a book, Life, Struggle, and Death of uh, the Means Getter. Mm. If so, you have if you have a little short, maybe a couple of paragraphs so people could get a sense of what it was like, and then Pablo wants to comment, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mike, it's it's very important to have yeah. uh, to 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 have people interviewed, videotaped. So just, these, uh, uh, I, I can read you just a, a small part. Alexander, while while he while you're looking a second, could uh, yeah, Pablo yeah. finish his comments and then go after Pablo? Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, let me say that up to now, over seventeen thousand living witnesses have been interviewed by the investigators who investigate the the criminal case of the genocide of the Belarusian people. And over 7.7 7, thousand of those uh, of those survivors 
are prisoners of death camps. Uh, we uh, videotape every interview and we want to save these testimonies forever. It is important to have these interviews uh, to be able to recreate the entire objective and unbiased picture of uh, what uh, transpired. And uh, not only are we interviewing uh, residents, uh, citizens of Belarus, uh, we are also requesting other countries from the Commonwealth of Independent States to help locate living witnesses. And we are recording those witnesses as well uh, by, by video and also keeping uh, these records for the posterity. That is very interesting to note and, and very important. I really appreciate that, Pablo. Uh, Alexander, could you read that a little bit to us there? Yeah, I, I can read you a sh uh, short part of uh, uh, witness of Bella Pruslina. Uh, she's writing about what she felt uh, in Geta. When you have two young children uh, on your hands, a one-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son, your first, your first question is, how are you going to feed them? We didn't get far, far trying to escape from Minsk. When we returned home after the bombing and the being fired uh, at, from the air, after all this horror, I found my room completely empty. All our belongings were gone. We didn't even have anything to cover ourselves with at night. We went from house to house, beginning, uh, begging, and I kept asking myself, God, uh, is this happening, if it is happening to me? Uh, this was uh, the very beginning of uh, the war. I think that she even didn't live in the ghetto yet. That's purely amazing. Thank you so much. It's very riveting to hear words of, of what's going through these people's minds. I, I cannot imagine the fear and, uh, you know, and anguish that they are experiencing just trying to get food. Uh, you know, we, we live in the countries now that have plenty of food and uh, it's not that way, but it, it can always slip. Like Pablo said, uh, you just uh, one uh, leader away from uh, going back to something like this if you if you look the other way. So education is very important here. Uh, Pablo, could you catch us up today a little bit about what's going on there in Belarus and the trials? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll be happy to do that. Uh, to uh, uh, to uh, just to complete uh, uh, information about living witnesses. Uh, it was just yesterday, and I can send you the link, it was just yesterday that our national television aired a film uh, about the atrocities of the uh, Ukrainian uh, criminal group that was operating in Western Ukraine and Western Belarus, not only during the war, but after the liberation from the Nazis in the war. That's why we are saying genocide of Belarusian people during and after the war, because for several years after the war, those people have been in charge of the entire city, towns, not, not big cities, but small towns, villages. They commanded everything and they, uh, they persecuted people whose uh, like families were fighting in the war because we are still we are liberating Europe from the Nazis, but uh, they were persecuting, they were after the people whose sons uh, and grandsons were fighting in the war. They were also uh, against uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, against uh, common people, uh, you know, living in the villages who would not support their uh, Nazi ideolo ideology. And even after the war was over for several years, we had to stamp out those groups uh, through our uh, uh, law enforcement services. And uh, dozens of law enforcement people, uh, not, uh, not to say about common people, but law enforcement people were killed by those groups with clashes. Uh, which were uh, in which we are try we were trying to uh, you know to uh, 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 stamp out and eradicate uh, those vestiges of the pro-Nazi Ukrainian formations in Western Belarus. Uh, so uh, about the criminal investigation into genocide case, the most recent figures uh, uh, by the Prosecutor General's Office. 
over, as I said, over 17,000 of uh, witnesses and uh, victims of, uh, of genocide, survivors of genocide uh, were uh, interrogated uh, in the criminal case on, on the genocide since the moment of its initiation. 483 uh, sites have been inspected where the Nazis could have killed and buried uh, 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 general population. Uh, 39 places uh, where 39 uh, graves, mass graves have been dug out and uh, the search works are being conducted on them. Uh, 586 uh, places of uh, uh, forced uh, 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 deprivation of labor, uh, uh, the concentration camps, so to say, were discovered in, in Belarus, including 90 concentration camps which were unknown before. Uh, at least 11,000.7 settlements have been uh, discovered, which were fully or partially burnt, including uh, 25 new places. So 11.7 altogether, uh, which includes those who, which, we, which were discovered before, and 2,500 new places which were discovered during the investigation. At least 270 settlements have shared the tragic fate of Hatin, so they were destroyed and burnt with their population and they never uh, uh, they were they, they, they were never uh, uh, living places again so they they were lost they were gone 270 and about 100 of them have been discovered during the investigation and our prosecutor general's office has sent over 100 official requests for legal assistance on the criminal case to uh, corresponding entities of foreign states. Uh, uh, and the number of foreign states is 28. So these are the specific uh, uh, results and update of the of the criminal investigation. Yeah, that, that's uh, uh, amazing when you consider that, you know, a lot of countries aren't putting any resources at all towards that. So you, you guys should be commended uh, greatly for that. Uh, something that I think is, needs to be more developed in the world press to actually show what you can do. Now, with that in mind, I, I'd like to have a concluding, uh, co some concluding comments here from both of you guys. And the question is gonna be basically, uh, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen again? And uh, how can, when will this be resolved? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if we can change everybody's attitude, but we sure could get along a lot better. But what do you see for a resolvement and how can we make sure that this changes? We'll start with Alexander first and we'll go to, to uh, Pablo. Uh, you see, we do, we do our best. We try um, educate, educate people, uh, tell, um, Tell, tell what happened to children, to grown-ups, uh, visitors of our museum. And uh, what is uh, very important is uh, that uh, we, we have to, uh, to support the uh, culture of memory culture, to tell uh, people about uh, the, the stories of survivors, the stories of victims, um, to, to to, speak, uh, to, to tell people that uh, all these victims, they were not just just numbers, uh, just hundreds or thousands of people. They Each of one was an individual and with his, uh, his life, his thoughts, uh, his plans, uh, his memory. It's very important to show all, all these people, as, as many we do. Unfortunately, we don't know uh, all names, but just tell about the people stories of which we know. I think that this is a good way, uh, you know, to um, the, the good good way of education. I I absolutely agree with Alexander. 
And I want to add that uh, it is important to, to uh, continue this investigation to spread the word about atrocities of the Nazis, uh, trying not to hide the uh, historic truth and historic facts. I, I should also say that uh, uh, this, uh, in addition to Office of Prosecutor General, uh, the, there is an interagency working group that includes uh, people from the National Academy of Sciences, Institute of History, National Archives, the Museum of the History of the Great Patriotic War, Ministry of Education, other ministries, uh, offices of the governor, and the list goes on and on, and educational facilities uh, and uh, uh, people uh, from uh, the uh, State Control Committee and other offices. So the, in, virtually the entire country is involved in this investigation. It is conducted by the Office of Prosecutor General, but the entire country is involved contributes to this nationwide case. And of course, the, the media is spreading this information uh, all over the country and abroad. And uh, Mike, uh, we would appreciate you and the World Affairs Council of yours to, to continue this noble work and shed the light on, on, the, uh, on the tragic uh, pages of our history and the history of genocide of the Belarusian people. Yeah, uh, we're not trying to just do tragedy. We're, we're trying to uh, actually uh, celebrate some of the stuff that you're doing because some of the stuff that you're doing is is probably the best in the world right now. We, I wish I had more people emulating this, more people trying to educate their, their people, uh, more people to make sure that this doesn't happen again. It's one thing to say, it's one thing to put in the history books, but it's one thing to actually bring your country together to do that. And, and I think uh, your country should be uh, commended and you guys personally should be commended for all your great work. Now, I do want to introduce uh, one of our interns here, uh, Lillian Kibler, and she wants to ask uh, the final question. Hi. So the final question is, how has the Jewish community of Belarus been impacted by the Nazis then in the trials now? Did, did you get, uh, we'll start with Alexandra. Go do ahead. Do you need to repeat it? Yeah. How has the Jewish community of Belarus been impacted by the Nazis then in the trials now? Uh, you see, it uh, um, it was really a terrible time. Uh, the times of Holocaust, it was a terrible time for the community. Uh, we can say that the com community which lived on uh, Belarusian territory for hundreds, hundreds of years uh, took a great part in uh, Belarusian history and culture, uh, practically disappeared. Uh, uh, before the Second World War, the Jewish population of uh, Belarus was nearly one million people. Uh, and during uh, the Holocaust times, uh, nearly 800,000 people were killed or died uh, so uh, today, uh, it really is difficult to say how how many Jews do we have in Belarus, but it's like it, between uh, thirty thousand and fifty thousand people. So it, it less than zero point point five percent actually. But what uh, Jews try uh, to do today in, in the country? We, uh, you know, they have it. Uh, uh, we we have projects uh, to put uh, the monuments uh, on the places of uh, uh, mass killing, mass graves, uh, to uh, remember the people who who died, uh, the uh, yeah who died during the sec Second World War, who were killed actually during the Second World War. We try to uh, to tell about this part of Belarusian history. And uh, so this is uh, the, a, a mission which uh, Jewish community in Belarus has today. And uh, what, what we do in Belarus is we are trying to uh, uh, to depict uh, the the story, the plight of the Belarusian Jews uh, through uh, 
pictures through videos, documentary films, and uh, the uh, very uh, there is a, a very recent uh, film that has been here, uh, aired uh, just uh, just this week. I think I think actually they have a, a premiere today on national television. Uh, the documentary film about the uh, escape uh, of uh, the Belarusian Jews from uh, Novogrudo ghetto in uh, in Western Belarus, where people had uh, uh, to dug uh, a tunnel over 300 meters long and uh, and have uh, and have it uh, uh, have it operational so that people on one on one night could uh, could ex escape from the ghetto. And I, I understand this is the most uh, massive uh, uh, escape uh, from uh, from the ghetto in, in the world war and uh, uh, there is a, a, a great monument in the museum of Jewish resistance in Novogrudok. I, I had the pleasure of visiting it a couple of years ago and they are they're making a great uh, uh, a, a, a great uh, a demonstration of, of what was there and uh, you can actually see the tunnel from from the surface because they have transparent plates uh, the, the on the trajectory of the tunnel. So they 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 recreated uh, these events very well, and they have a, a, a wall of mourning, so to say, so called, which was erected a couple of years ago. And actually, uh, uh, the Kushner family uh, and the other families of of the uh, of the Jews who escaped from the ghetto and found themselves in the U.S. have participated in it, and we are we are, we, are, we are proud to say that uh, you know we we very much welcome um, these these efforts to commemorate uh, uh, the events, and this is just one example. There are numerous examples uh, all over the country. Do have any final thoughts you would like to make? Okay. Can I? Tell just one, one more word about uh, you know about the situation. Uh, I want uh, I, I must say that I, I must say that the authorities uh, in towns in uh, in different places in Belarus they support uh, the memory about uh, uh, the victims of Holocaust and sometimes they help us to make a. Uh, um, uh, a memo, you know, a, 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 a memorial meeting, but sometimes there are places where there are no Jews. For example, last year uh, I was on, uh, uh, you know, on, uh, in Disna. This is the smallest town uh, in Belarus, and uh, they uh, made a. Uh, a, a, a meeting uh, telling people about the 80th anniversary of uh, uh, of mass killing of uh, Jewish population in this town. Uh, uh, they uh, they took children from school, children from the university they were, and nearly 200 people here to this uh, memorial ceremony, and only two Jews. So and uh, for sure, uh, we we can see how it's important for the people to remind about their neighbor neighbors about uh, the, uh, the Jewish people who lived there in these Belarusian uh, towns uh, before the Second World War. Yeah, and and you, when you consider that if. Uh... Is a little over eleven percent of the population, I think, was Jewish before forty-one, and then you had that little, and it goes down to point zero percent that you eliminated eighty some or eighty not eighty to ninety percent of the Jewish population. That's a significant decrease. So there would be a lot of people that may not know what's what's going on now simply because uh, you know uh, either they uh, were killed or they were uh, you know moved to another country. Pavel, do you have any uh, final thoughts? Uh, well, uh, uh, it is important that we continue this engagement. And uh, as long as you pursue uh, your educational uh, program uh, related to geography of genocide, we'll be happy to communicate with you and uh, engage Belarusian authorities. And uh, uh, in any case, you can always uh, count on, on me and my embassy, and we will be uh, 
uh, together with uh, you in uh, this uh, endeavor. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Goodbye uh, from Minsk and goodbye from Washington, D.C. And we say goodbye from Austin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.